Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosal here. Today I'm going to be talking through some of the differences I see between consumer and professional grade camcorders. First things first, I wouldn't consider myself a totally seasoned camcorder expert or uh, even a video pro for that matter. So take everything I'm saying from the perspective of a camcorder hobbyist uh, rather than as a uh, leading authority on camcorders. I have been using camcorders shooting with them for about four years now. Currently a lot of my video output is for this YouTube channel, but I also do some professional video work um, shooting at conferences for uh, the person to whom I'm currently employed for uh, communications work. So it's a mixture of the two. Um, somewhat recently I upgraded from a consumer camcorder to uh, what's considered a professional camcorder. I'm gonna hold these two guys side by side so you can see the differences in size, the differences in everything. This is the Canon Vixia HF R800. It was my first uh, camcorder purchase when I decided I was interested in learning about video. And this is a great little camcorder from uh, Canon, but it definitely fits within the consumer camcorder area. I'm gonna talk about what exactly that means in a second. Now, if I pick up my um, Canon, I'm gonna swap around so the Canon logo and the XLR controls can be seen. This is the XA40. This is considered a compact pro camcorder, right? But if you put it next to this, you can see already the difference in size is pretty, pretty substantial. So what exactly is the difference? Now, what I would say is that in my observation, and I've had discussions with this, about this topic with people on uh, the videography subreddit, it's not really a scientific distinction. The XA40, for instance, fits within what Canon officially markets as its pro uh, camcorder series, but you know, I can definitely imagine some really grizzled uh, ESG news operators used to these huge shoulder mounts saying, that's not a pro camcorder, that thing. But so it's not, I don't think there's a scientific distinction between this camcorder is consumer, this camcorder is pro, rather it's a collection of features that you will get or you're kind of expected to get in the world of pro uh, camcorders that you won't typically see in consumer. So uh, this actually isn't even the very bottom of the consumer range, but if we talk about audio for instance, and this is actually why I picked out the Vixia over the other options, this guy has a 3.5 or 1 eighth in jack and you can actually monitor on this and again you'll find even cheaper consumer camcorders that don't have any external audio input or no ability to monitor but that's kind of where it starts and stops from an audio perspective the distinguishing feature of course of most camcorders versus cinema cameras is that a lot of camcorders are fixed lens it doesn't mean that you can't add lens filters or things like telephoto or macro um, filters that'll fit on top of the lens, but the actual, you can't interchange between the lens and the sensor. Now that's not all camcorders, but a lot of them. And that's actually the case also with the uh, Vixia, sorry, the, um, the, the XA40, which is pretty much the basic, the basis entry level of Canon's uh, 4K Pro camcorder range. The 50 has a one inch sensor and the 55 and 45 have SDI output. So let me just talk about a few things when I upgraded to this guy that I wasn't able to get or use on my consumer camcorder, the Vixia, right? So let's start with audio. The first thing is this has, firstly, it's actually a form factor, right? This is a very common form factor for professional camcorders in which you have the camcorder body, you have a top handle, and it's very common that you're gonna have controls on the top handle. So if you see here, I have a record button, I have a zoom toggle, I have a cold shoe. Now the idea of camcorders versus let's say DSLR or mirrorless is firstly they're intended for video capture primarily. And secondly, they're kind of intended for use, the main users really of camcorders these days are probably news and documentarians and news is commonly called ENG, electronic news gathering. So in these kind of shooting environments, it's very quick. So camcorders, because they're not that small, tend to put a lot of controls physically. So if you look at this side of my camcorder, this is the XLR audio control panel. These are all physical switches. So when you're shooting something in a new setting, you don't wanna be going through menus and scrolling and scrolling and clicking. You can control pretty much everything audio related using your fingers, right? So um, in terms of the audio on this guy, firstly, I've got two XLR ins, right? And this is something again that you will see on professional camcorders and not on consumer camcorders. XLR, what's the difference between um, XLR as a connection and um, 
you know, eighth or, uh, or 6.35 quarter inch. Um, firstly, there's amazing videos about balanced versus unbalanced audio up here on YouTube. And if you're really interested, feel free to check those out. The, the skinny of it is if you take an XLR connector, I'm just gonna pull out my shock and microphone, and you look at what's on the inside, it's got three pins, right? So each, the audio goes and returns, each pin, and I'm struggling with words here a little bit, is separated. So within the actual XLR cabling, it's, it's separate. If you look at, for example, your average uh, headphone, right? Even if it's TRS or T, tip, ring, sleeve, sleeve, TRSS, um, all the different signals are running up the same piece of uh, piece of wire. So that definitely can make a difference in terms of uh, susceptibility to RF interference and stuff like that. So that's number one is when you're getting a camcorder, you're getting pro audio through XLR. And I most, uh, a lot of camcorders also support. So we just undock here on the XA40, I have my 3.5. So I can make a choice, I can use a um, professional audio and basically any microphone because these XLRs, switches here, the switch, uh, where is it? Yeah, this one here for both of my two XLR inputs. You can see on the right here, there's mic plus 48 volt. So this camcorder is capable of putting out 48 volt power and it's capable of uh, taking in XLR microphones. So that basically means you can use, to the best of my knowledge, pretty much any microphone you're gonna find on the market, regardless of whether it needs phantom power, regardless of whether it's XLR connected. And that's something, again, in the pro audio environment, the microphones tend to be uh, XLR, or a lot of them are XLR, so that's considered very useful. Uh, what else will you find in a pro camcorder? So I would distinguish between consumer and pro camcorders as well. There's another distinction, and that's between, I'd say, pro camcorders and ENG camcorders. I'll get to that in a second. The true ENG camcorders, the stuff you see TV guys carry around, are kind of, I would say, almost in a class of their own. They're absolute beasts. Uh, but there are, and this is a kind of pretty niche part of the market that Canon are serving and a couple of other manufacturers, this kind of form factor that it's definitely bigger than a, a consumer camcorder, uh, but it's, it's not quite that big. Um, in terms of other factors you're going to find in uh, professional camcorders or other features, I should say, just a couple that come to mind would be SDI out. So SDI is used in professional environments. So in a consumer camcorder, you'll have HDMI out for putting the, you know, if you're, work, if you're feeding your stream into a mixer, but SDI is preferred in professional workflows. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. My understanding is that you can get everything in SDI, including time code as well as the video. And speaking of time code, that's another feature you'll see in professional camcorders in that they have uh, time code uh, as well. And the time code for keeping various um, devices on set in sync for uh, working in post, we're talking about audio and video, that's something that would be way overkill in uh, consumer land. I'm sure if you search, there's probably some sort of a workaround that you can get consumer camcorders to work. Other things, that those would be kind of the main things and kind of features I've noticed so far that the step up from consumer to pro has given me. The menus are a little bit more complicated, uh, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, this guy can also do four channel audio, whereas um, I'm limited to, uh, to capturing, I think only up to two channels on the Vixia. Another feature you'll see on pro camcorders coming back to the point that they like to put their controls at the hands of the user. This is a zoom ring. It's actually an interchangeable zoom focus ring on the XA40. And you'll see a lot of the pro camcorders have actually three rings before the lens. So you can literally, again, use your fingers and toggle zoom, focus and iris using three different rings. Um, that's pretty much what I can think about, but just to add a tiny little bit of detail to this discussion, I've gone onto the B&H website and just to show you guys the, the separate category. So if, you, if I click under camcorders, the way B&H do it is they don't call it pro camcorders and consumer camcorders. And this is actually uh, the way, if I recall correctly from my visit there last summer, the way they lay out their, uh, their showroom is like the bottom level is for uh, professional and then the layers above that are for consumer. Another thing you'll get with pro camcorders is sometimes Canon have a pro protection line that you're eligible for if you buy certain pro products. So there, it's kind of just a different market in terms of who actually buys these things, especially given that not a ton of people are buying camcorders these days anyway. Um, but just to show you guys, for instance, under uh, the way B&H do it, they don't talk about pro camcorders. 
uh, they talk about camcorders, meaning pro camcorders, and then they distinguish consumer camcorders. So I'm just going to look into these two uh, different uh, product listing pages, right? So this is the, uh, so they actually do call it here professional camcorders. And again, you're seeing that kind of classic form factor for a pro camcorder. It's got the top handle, it's got a ton. This is the Canon X XF605. It's got an absolute monstrous amount of hardware switches. It looks a little bit like the cockpit on a Boeing 747 where that you just see tons and tons of switches. Um, and they all kind of look the same. They, again, another thing you'll see here, and this is something I have on my XC40, is a shotgun mount. So that's pretty standard that if you're shooting for professional video, you're gonna be using an external uh, microphone and the internal audio there is just, just for scratch audio basically. So they'll either come with a built-in light and a built-in microphone. Some pro camcorders go down this route or they'll include a um, physical mount. So that's what this guy has. It's got a mount and I can just, uh, I just literally pushed in this microphone and I can change it out. So um, it's, it's more interchangeable if you have it like this that you can swap out between shock and microphones. But this is an example, this Panasonic camera is uh, the type that I actually was considering buying and that was what it has the fixed microphone there. Um, as far as I know, that microphone is fixed. That shotgun microphone is fixed and I think it's got a built-in light as well. Ah, one final thing I missed in my list of features. I'm gonna jump back to me for a second. Super useful feature is the tally light. So this is a little light that will illuminate when you're recording. So if I'm shooting a video interview, and I've got a guy, just tell them, wait for the red light to come on, and then start speaking. So that's, again, another kind of uh, feature that is uh, ubiquitous in the world of broadcasting. I can keep going through this, but I think you get the idea of pro camcorders and what they tend to look like. Now, if you go into the consumer camcorder category, uh, you're kind of at your soccer mom, uh, as people like to call it, level where it's kind of a smaller handheld device. You don't have that top handle. You don't have those pro audio controls. And again, they kind of all look alike as well, right? There is definitely a similarity here. And this is a pretty small market as people in general are unfortunately moving away from camcorders, uh, you're seeing less uh, vibrancy in the camcorder market. And you can see Canon are actually kind of dominating, I'd say Canon, Panasonic, JVC dominating over other. So this is, you know, 167 bucks, probably as cheap as you're gonna find. It's very basic. I don't think this guy even does uh, internal audio. So the cheaper you get, the more basic you're going to get, the smaller the sensor, that kind of thing. So I think the difference is pretty clear. Um, just a few things that you'll get on a pro camcorder, the pro audio controls, SDI. Uh, sometimes another, another feature uh, is a dual SD card, so you can have a backup SD to record proxy clips onto. It's just kind of another grade of features. Now, just before I wrap this video up, let me show you guys the ENG I just typed into Google Images. ENG camcorder and I mean the difference between pro camcorders and ENG camcorders again I don't think is fixed I think it's we're talking more about terms of art here but these are just like beasts if you've ever picked one of these up you, you you can see how heavy they are the battery packs are gigantic it's just the next level again they've got little antennas I think hard built into this model for instance uh, that can do wireless HDMI and um, it's all intended for you know for a professional uh, video cameramen who are out shooting for hours per day and they want everything possible on the camcorder body Some like this I think might have interchangeable lens. So again, that's not a that's not a fixed fixed rule So you can see there's just kind of a step up again when you go from consumer to pro camcorder and then looking into the uh, ENG market and by the way the price difference is astronomical this guy cost me about fifteen hundred dollars it was the cheapest 4k uh, capable pro camcorder I could find some of these ENG camcorders go up to like seventeen thousand twenty thousand dollars and I'm probably sure there's more expensive though it's again it's a, it's a big leap in cost so I hope this uh, for anyone looking at whether they whether you want to go down the consumer if you're looking to stick with camcorders or start with camcorders, whether you wanna go look for a consumer model or a pro model. I hope this has given at least just some kind of clarity about what the uh, differences in features and capabilities are. Thank you guys for watching. More videos will be coming soon.